Welcome to episode number 35 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. I'm your host, Kent Rourke. Uh, we have a very special topic to me this uh, week and a very special guest, someone I grew up with in POAs in Minnesota, and that's Susie Schultz Huff. Of course, she grew up in POAs as Susie Schultz. She'll be joining us here in a few seconds. And the topic tonight is uh, POAs that rock the 80s. We're going to kind of talk about the 80s a little bit, kind of tongue in cheek about the decade. And uh, it was kind of a fun decade, especially if you grew up during that time. And then uh, we have about 100 images to go over tonight. There was a lot of great POAs in the 1980s. A lot of them were born in the 70s. Some of them became famous uh, in the 90s as well, but they did start out in the 80s. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, POAs to talk about tonight, and uh, like I say, a lot of cool pictures. So I'm going to bring on my guest, uh, and this is a picture of her here with her Supreme Champion Mayor Sandy Tufdots. And uh, Susie, are you there? There you are. <laughs> Hello, Susie. So we got a couple people watching already. My good friend uh, Terry Thorson in Iowa, he's on. Uh, so I don't see Tracy yet, but you know as and people that watch this show live, of course, it's on Facebook forever. So even though it's live tonight, you, know, you can go on anytime. If you know family members or friends that want to watch it, uh, just tell them how to get onto the POA History Group and they can see it uh, anytime. So how are you doing tonight, Susie? Okay. <laughs> Talk about the 80s. So the 80s was a cool decade. That's, of course, that's when I met you. I probably met you in about 82 or 83, and I'd say we became friends about 85, so 84, 85. So I remember you sticking up for me at POA meetings and stuff because I had a unique experience in POAs. I was loved POAs as much as anyone ever born, but I didn't show. You know, I showed in Halter, but I didn't show like you did and compete. So I always felt like I was a little different because I thought those kids should have got more attention but I was like a breeder when I was a young guy and into pedigrees and stuff so you always kind of had me tag along and uh, I, I thank you for that so um. <laughs> yeah, and after about 10 minutes dad goes well pictures that I still have but she happened to snap a picture of me on Ringo and I don't know if that still exists because it doesn't look too good so Ringo looks good but yeah, I was all hunched over and uh, I, halter was good for me. I, I ended up doing some stuff in halter and that was fine. So some people are made to jump and some people are made to rain and some people are made to stay on the ground. So that's what I did. But, so can't hear you. Can hear you now, they said. Somebody just said can hear you now. Sometimes it's on their end because I hear you loud and clear. So. Yeah, just let us know if you can't hear us or if you have any questions. And again, Susie and I was just kind of talking before the show here, and uh, it's going to be a viewer participation because uh, we know a lot about these people. Susie grew up with them, and I did too, and then I've researched them, you know, my whole life. But sometimes we don't always uh, remember the name. So Terry says he can't, can't hear you, but somebody said, can't hear who you are talking to. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, Susie, they say they can't hear you, so I guess I'm the only one that can hear you. We'll fix that, folks, because you're my good guest, so we're going to make sure that's fixed. So let's go back to screen. So anyway, if, uh, this is live TV, of course, so hopefully your mom got in, Susie. <laughs> you still there? I'm here. Okay. Let's see. I bet it's going to reconnect right now. We were connected the whole time we were talking. Okay. Go ahead and say something. I hear you in my left ear, Tracy. Can you hear Susie? Just say something, Susie. Okay. Hi, Tracy. I can hear you loud and fine, so I don't know what's going on. No, I wonder what's going on. Hmm, because I hear you. I might try to call you back, yep, yeah, because I can hear you in my headphones and I have the Bluetooth on and everything. So, okay, everybody, we're. <laughs> but she's. But Monica, can you hear Susie? Nobody can hear you. 
Make sure the red and green buttons are not pushed and the Bluetooth volume is turned up. That might be it. The Bluetooth... Okay. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. I don't know. My, my uh, producer, the guy that owns the studio, owns Jackson's Auto Family, he's telling me what to do. So... Uh, but let me call you back, Susie. This is a practice, everybody. <laughs> okay, thanks. Call you right back. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. We were talking for quite a while before the show, and I was talking to her through the headphones, so I don't know uh, what's going on. But let's, uh, let's try this again. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to disconnect my Bluetooth, everyone, and try that. So just stand by. Okay, Bluetooth's on. Anyway, we do have a great show tonight, and uh, Susie's all ready to talk about the 80s and all the POAs she showed against and remembers. Of course, the magazine's a big uh, part of that, too. Connected for calls. Okay, so let's try this again. Well, I sure hope this works. It usually does, so. Okay, here we go again. Susie Schultz Huff, part two. Hi, let's, I hope it works. Because... <laughs> This is my 35th show, and I've had probably 20 guests, and I was all excited for this one, so I just don't know why it wouldn't work. I have everything turned up, so let's see. Go ahead, people, comment and see. Susie's on here, so let's, let me know if you can hear. My phone says it's Bluetooth to the Roadcaster Pro. That's what we're using over here. Shout out to them. Maybe I'll get a free sponsorship or something. And I have the Bluetooth on. So I didn't do anything different than I ever do. So, hello, Tracy. Mon no, can't hear. Well, I don't understand what's going on. Wow. I guess we talked too much beforehand, Susie. So, <laughs> right. I can always just put the speaker on, but on my phone. But yeah, but that wouldn't be as good as quality. It should be right through the through the Bluetooth. So. Uh, And I am loud, okay? I'll turn mine down and turn these up. Okay, Bluetooth fair device. Huh, it's saying I'm paired. I don't know what's going on. Of course, when I have somebody I want to try to impress, somebody I know, <laughs> I have problems, so. Okay. No, Monica. You can always type, yeah. Well, let's see. Let's try this once. Go ahead and talk and see how well I can hear you. Okay. How okay. is it now? Well, I can hear you through the phone. I don't know how well they're going to hear you. Uh, I wonder what's wrong because I got everything just the way I always do. It worked last week. You said something about rebooting. Would oh, we like can hear her now. Her. Somebody said they can hear me. Well, oh. yeah, because I'm on speaker. Hello. You're on speaker ah. phone, so would like to. Um, so quality may not be as good, but right, it just but we'll, may work. We may hear you. Woo! -hoo. Okay, let's see. I'm still not going to give up. So, just a minute. I'm trying to. There we go. I bet your room is now oh, tap. Everyone says it's working, so whatever you're doing. Okay, well, let's just have you on on uh, speaker. So I, I just can't hear you in my headphones, but I can hear you in the speaker phone. So, all right. I can hear her. Okay, so Linda says she can hear you. Linda Bob Dembski from Wisconsin. Hi, Linda. So we're good. All right, so sorry about that, everybody, but that's what you get for live, unedited uh, podcast. So anyway, let's start over, Susie. So <laughs> we met in the 80s, uh, and you, you guys got in the POAs in the 70s, right? Just kind of tell your story a little bit. 
That's right. So I have an older brother who's eight to nine years older. So they started in the 70s. Um, I think I was maybe one or two years old. So I just did a little bit of lead line. Um, but they they showed quite a bit. It was WHC Ringo Starr. Um, oh, <laughs> Rich Crane. Hi, Susie from Oklahoma. Hi, Rich Crane from Minnesota. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we, uh, Rich Crane actually was living up here in Minnesota at the time. And he remembers me from when I was really little like that. So he had lots of fun telling me about all the things that I did playing in the mud and embarrassing things I did. So thanks, Rich, for bringing up all those memories. Um, (laughs) And uh, oh, goodness. Yeah, the pictures are up. Pictures Um, up. You mentioned Ringo, so I skipped the family picture and went to you on Cap. That's Ringo Starr. Yeah, Yeah, Ringo Starr's on the left. Cap is on the right. Um, So my brother aged out, I think, in, oh, my gosh, 81 maybe. And that's say. just when, just when I was, I felt like I was just really getting started. Right. So. I'm going to show the yeah. family picture. This is one that I found in a, probably an 82 magazine. It was a feature of your family. And uh, that's your mom, Joan, standing up. And then, of course, your dad, Ron, uh, sitting down. And then your brother, Dick. And there you are, smiling uh, like you usually do. So uh your mom really helped me out you know she well of course you guys took the tough dots we'll get into that and that kind of helped put us on the map but then years and years later after you guys were out of POAs and I was uh showing uh, raising POAs I wrote a book and your mom was the editor of that book so uh that was a big deal for me so your mom really helped she me liked out there. she liked she was, doing that she liked doing that she was an english teacher so then right you, well that's you why i reached out to her being an english teacher and POAs and good friends like that's right. marriage made in heaven right well I like to reach out to people I know so yeah that helped and then I ended up losing one of the copies that she edited so I had to go back my memory and re like do what she told me was wrong and everything so so when it <laughs> finally got to the publisher it wasn't quite like because it was a long you know it was a couple years to get it published and we went through a couple different people and uh, one famous author had it a horse author and he was going to publish it and then he just sat on it so we ended up going a different route but yeah it was kind of an interesting story so okay i have a lot of pictures of you here probably 10 pictures of you and your family so there you are on ringo that would be in 1984 at the international show so des moines Des Moines, yep. So he's really, I mean, you rode Cap and you you had a mare you rode, I know, for a little while, but he's kind of your first real, I mean, he was a supreme champion and he was a real good mount. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He was the first who could do everything. Right. So that was really fun because then he taught me how to do, you know, I had just done pleasure classes. So then he taught me how to do reining and jumping and right. games. And He was your typical was really iron POA, your iron gilding would do anything, could compete at everything. You know, he maybe wasn't the top of the line, but he was really good. You know, one of those just, just kept going and going, you know, and could do, do everything. So, but he won his fair share of stuff and he became a supreme champion. So, uh, he did. He did. Yeah. I think we may, my mom remembers going, I think we had to go to a show in North Dakota or something like that to get his final grand in Halter. <laughs> right. That's, yeah, you guys went to a show. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. People go to 30 shows to get points, so why not head to North Dakota? So, uh, yeah. I don't even think there's been a show in North Dakota in many years now, so probably decades. But uh, what costume is this? Is this Joan of Arc? Yeah, yeah, so my brother, I think my brother was Lancelot or something, and okay. my my mom designed it and had somebody from a theater company who does costumes make it, and so he was actually like a knight when, when he <laughs> right. um, was in costume class, and then we had this costume, and that's when my mom was like, hmm, how could we still use this costume? And then I, <laughs> right. then I became Joan of Arc. <laughs> right. And you can see your chin. You can tell it's a girl under there. I was looking at that earlier. I couldn't tell it was you. I knew it was you as soon as I seen the picture in the magazine. That's what the judges said, too. They'd yeah. come up and say, is that a girl under there? Yeah, I can tell by just your chin. But, yeah, that's. I remember your mom telling that story. I think they, you guys went to a play or something or some production, and she met a person and had them make this this out this costume so it was definitely cool you uh use this on Dottie too right on sandy tough dots 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. was a good sport. Boy, those those ponies <laughs> well, were because that was hot, especially right. if you were somewhere like Oklahoma City. That well, that's one country. thing about POA is they put all kinds of stuff on. There was a girl this year <laughs> from Wisconsin had two Dalmatians on on her. You know, they were fake, but they one on each side. And I'm like, boy, that's a good pony that can stand that. So. So uh, we just got to tell people that you're not uh, six foot eight or anything. You were just in the top of your nine through twelve bracket when this picture was taken. I know all these people real well: Shannon Foster, Danielle Kruger, you, and Stephanie Hansen. So this would have been in the early '80s at the at the Minnesota banquet, probably or futurity. You know. Yeah, it looks like Leonard Lewis's house. Yeah, I think we Leonard decided. Lewis's house. That's where I met a lot of POA kids and families. That was good times. They, they would uh, roast a pig, put a pig in the ground or whatever, and and uh, have a old-fashioned barbecue every year. And we held the futurity there, and then I believe the year ends or something like that. At maybe towards the end when we were aging out, they started doing it different. But they did that for a lot of the '80s at Leonard and Jones' house. So, yeah, they're very, very generous. Oh, about they, yeah, doing they, that. they are. So this is our connection here. You started riding uh, Sandy Tough Dots for. Our family. I think my dad approached uh, your mom and dad that he knew Ringo was getting a little older and slowing down a little bit, and you know he's. Then people were starting to get junior ponies in the state of Minnesota, and you were looking for one, I believe, or your mom was. So that's how that happened, and uh, then you guys ended up buying several other tough dots from us. So like Ruby. We loved the tough dots. <laughs> yeah, especially I the we, one named Susie. <laughs> yeah, the one that we named Susie because. Because uh, our good friend Doc Nevers got up at a sale and said, "This is a, he bought a full brother to him. You know, he, they named him Chips Even Tougher. Jackie Nevers named him. And the, they were going to keep him for a stallion for a while, but then they went a different direction. He was a few spot. And uh, when he sold him at a spring sale, I think in Minnesota or Iowa, he said, this is a full brother to the famous mayor, uh, Sandy Schultz rides named Susie Tough Dots. And Dad's like, that's, well, the next one's... Susie Tough Dots, so that's how that happened. So, <laughs> plus we were honoring you anyway, so because you helped uh, put us on the map, right? And you were, we got lucky. You got a good horse. I know you feel fortunate to get a good pony, but we felt fortunate to find a good family that was willing to go down the road. So, we did. We we were so so grateful to your family, and Sandy Tough Dots ended up just being. The pony of a lifetime. She was so. she was a good pony. Yep. She she was yep. another. She was a mare. She so she wasn't quite as deadheaded as like Ringo. She had her moments like all mares do, but she had a little extra flair. I think her mother Arrow added some of that to her. I remember tell my dad telling your mom that Arrow had some Arabian in her, and mm -hmm. she's like, ooh, <laughs> you know. And you could kind of tell that once in a while. I mean, she, you know, she did pleasure well and stuff, but she she had some animation when you wanted it. So. She did, and you know what was funny is I think a little bit of that Arab, we always said, um, there was a judge when we went out to an Oregon regional, and he said something about presence. Like, he just said, what I like about her, he came up after the show, is that she seems to know that she's performing. Like, she knows when to turn it on. Right. And then and she also had excellent endurance, and mm. I think that's, you know, that right. whole Arab thing. They, they know when they're performing, and they can last a long time. Right. Well, I've told this story before. You know, we went down to Max Nebregal's and bought East Acres Chippewa. First, we just bought five mares, and Arrow was one of the mares, and, and uh, Max considered her the weakest of the five. Well, she was a snow cap, so she was a color producer, and she was short. She was 50 inches, so Dad liked her because of that. Well, we got all the mares herded up except Arrow. She wouldn't, she wouldn't herd up in uh, Sandy Tough Dots. Dottie was already about eight days old at the time, and they come down a lane and Max had set a 48 inch panel, I'll never forget it, and Arrow just 50 inches just cleared it like nothing and that little baby just followed right over and didn't scrape nothing, did, they just went right over it and we, <laughs> we had to start over and I was, let's see, I don't know how old I was, 11 or so, so you know, I was like, oh, you know, it was a big deal to me trying to catch them, but anyway, she did a good, Arrow did a great job as a broodmare and of course three of the Tough Dots, there was four Tough Dots, three of them became uh, champions, the three you guys had. The other one never went into POA. She was purchased uh, by a non-POA person and never found her way back, but uh, there's old Ruby. So I want to tell a story. Let's see, what story was I going to tell? I was going to think of something. I might think of it again, but 
Um, anyway, so there's Ruby. Okay, so tonight, anyway, the episode, it's not all about you, Susie, but a lot of it is. But it's about when we grew up in the 80s. So we're going to talk a little bit about pop culture because to us it was such a cool decade. Uh, I know people that grew up in the 90s or my, my folks in the 50s, they might argue. But it was just a different cool time, you know, like movies and music kind of found its way again, I think. And uh, so that's why I put this little meme on here. Uh, this will always be my Superman and Wonder Woman because that's what we grew up with. Uh, so, uh, of course, the Rubik's oh, yeah. Cube. Did you have a Rubik's Cube, Susie, or not? Maybe oh, yeah. You did, you did I yeah. I did. How about I a Simon? Did you have a Simon? Uh, huh? Yes, I had a Simon. And you know what's funny is my kids now, they're 10 and 12, and Rubik's Cubes are back. <laughs> and... Not- <laughs> I think I bought a Simon for me, and my kids have stolen that too. Oh, so. I, I never had a Simon. That's old as new. Yeah, they love it, it. Oh, it always. Yeah, I remember when my niece was little. I said something. I said, "You like Scooby Doo?" And she's my niece is forty some years old now, and she said she didn't know Scooby Doo. And I'm like, "What?" And then like ten, fifteen years later, Scooby Doo was back popular again. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of funny. Of course, MTV. That's back when it was really music television. So. We got the best part of MTV. I don't know what it is now, talk shows or uh, teenage moms and stuff. But uh, and then of course the Transformers. I'm just I'm teasing people. We're not going to show POA pictures for a minute here. We're going to talk about the 80s. So, but you can't get much more 80s than uh, Optimus Prime with the gold chain holding a boombox on his shoulder. So, I looked up popular things in the 80s, Susie, and that was one of the things: break dancing and boomboxes were listed oh, yeah. as popular things. And, and we then, didn't even have CD players quite yet. Oh, that was no. like later uh, in the 80s. Yeah, we were I remember, still cassette tapes. I remember seeing my first CD player. It was 88. I thought it was uh, out of a spaceship or something. Of course, I didn't have one until the 90s. But uh, Anyway, and then, of course, Knight Rider and Kit, David Hasselhoff, all that stuff. So movies, I remember you and your mom went and seen, well, maybe your whole family, but you went and seen Hoosiers, and you guys come and tell my dad because he was a basketball player and stuff in high school that he had to go he had to watch Hoosiers so I always I remember that story and then another story I didn't tell you but I always remember sitting in someone's camper I don't know it might have been your guys's camper but I think it was Lori Quas and you and me and you guys were talking about Top Gun and (laughs) and I didn't have the heart to tell you two girls that you both were a little older than me not much you're like half a year older than me and Lori was probably about a year but I, I didn't see I hadn't seen the movie yet and you're like oh I cried so much when Goose died and I'm like well <laughs> I guess I don't have to see the movie now but anyway so all right let's get back to some POA stuff that's why everybody's here Tracy just said best movie ever I guess she's talking about uh, Top Gun so uh, so here's Plot It's High Bar can you see the pictures all right Susie yeah all yeah right. you got a good connection up there in Minnesota that's good so of course, this is Brett Franklin. This would have been the early 80s. He was uh, the grand champion stallion early on. And then, of course, he was sold in 83 at the national sale uh, when Brett dispersed his family's uh, POAs and donated the money half to the club and half to uh, uh, Lance Scott, the foundation, because Lance was a POA kid who had been injured. So, And then uh, the DePews purchased this horse. I know Tony DePew real well, and then his younger brother, Chris, and this is Plot It's High Bar as an older stallion. And uh, DePew showed all over the country, I believe, didn't they, Susie? They sure did. And Kent and I were talking about some old stories, and one, but someone's going to have to help me with one of them. But um, I remember Andy DePew being kind enough one night. We were showing late, and I was so hungry, and there was <laughs> a... <laughs> they wouldn't. They, they had a fast food restaurant open, like just off the fairgrounds, but they wouldn't let you walk up to it. And the food thing was closed, and and so he offered to take me on his moped. He had a moped oh, on wow. the fairgrounds, and I got <laughs> yep. And I squeezed onto the back of it, and he took me through to get a cheeseburger. And uh, so I'll always be grateful to Andy DePew for that. All right, you'll and, never um, forget him all these years later. I'll man. never forget him. I'll never <laughs> forget him. And um, but were, was somebody will have to guess. We need participation. Who yeah, had good. the yellow trailer called the Big Banana? Was that the Depews? Rich Does Crane remember might know the that. Trailer? Rich Crane, yeah. you might remember that. Uh, some of the people watching should remember that. You know, we and never a- went in. We didn't stay at the fairgrounds. We usually stayed in a hotel because we didn't. We showed Halter and then left, so we weren't there as long, especially like at the national show. 
you know, so we weren't there all week. So I never got to see. Um, yeah. Tracy Someone said mopeds big... were popular at POA shows in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, they were. They certainly were. Yep. I just remember somebody had a big yellow gooseneck, and then I think they <laughs> sold it to another family, but this trailer was everywhere, and that was kind of like the hangout trailer Right. That was and, the cool uh, of the 80s, the big banana, and it even had like a logo on it. It had a name. <laughs> it was called the big banana. The big banana. Well, somebody's got to remember that. Come on. I'll, be, I'll yeah. feel bad if somebody, maybe somebody will come on and uh, say they remember that, so... Well, that's good times for sure. That's what POAs was all about. It just wasn't being an equestrian and learning stuff. It was meeting people from all over, just like it is now, and uh, making friends. Look, we're talking about it 40 years later, you know, so 35, 40. So here's a POA that was started out in our home state, Susie, and then he, he went all over the country. But 6SDBs, Minnesota, Mr. Magnificent. They didn't get the word Minnesota in this picture. but this They an, ran out of space. They ran out of space. Out. <laughs> the editor said, screw that. That's too many. Like you said, it caused the name change thing. That eight, Tracy will get a kick out of this because she knows us. Uh, 18 characters or whatever. His name was way bigger than that. So, because like I say, yeah. the Minnesota word's missing. Here he is with uh, Megan Eckroat from uh, Oklahoma, and there's his full name there. So, 6S, they got it spelled a little, they got the S with the DB, but that's okay. But 6S was Emory Davis. He had hundreds of POAs over the years, sometimes 100 at a time in southern uh, Minnesota. And this was his most famous by far POA he ever produced. He was a do anything uh, guy. So, and of course the Eckroats was a good 80s family. I think they got in in the 70s and they showed a bunch of great POAs throughout the 80s. Yeah, we talked about Chinook's Flaxy. Was Chinook's the, Flaxy, like, yeah. Megan had Chinook's Flaxy in the late 70s. I remember her winning the saddle in eight and under and that right. little pony could do everything. And she was, I remember that pony, my mom said the word flashy. Like, what? do you remember when we called we called the ponies flashy. Right, flashy, because <laughs> her, her mane and tail was flaxen kind of, and she was flashy. Mm -hmm. And then they yeah. had another gilding that was probably better than this one. I don't have a picture of him on here, but uh, Salty Little Britches they had. He oh, was a right. do-anything gilding that was just, you know, supreme many times over and fast, super fast POA. And uh, the POAs are still great Susie and uh, I love them and they're, they're probably they're built way better now because the height limit we're going to talk about that too the height change and the more horse influence and now people are breeding to right off the cover of the quarter horse journal you know what I mean people can breed to the biggest names and because of the height change but uh but the speed is a little different when you guys were showing and even when your brother was showing and some of the like the Cateses in Minnesota and the bone Bowmans or Bowmans, and you know who I'm talking about, different people like that. The POAs were a lot faster, I think, you know, than mm -hmm. the John Katzenberger and some of those those competitors. But but as far as oh, confirmation yeah. and stuff, of course, they look more horsey now. You know, they, they still have the pony in them, jeans, but they're, they're just a small horse for sure. But here's KS's Flaming Tiger. Uh, I can't remember who that is right now. I know he made his rounds too, of course, started out in Alabama. And, he, he went all over the POA circuit, uh, was one of the early day steel bred POAs. Okay, now we're gonna have about 25 pictures of this horse, not quite that many, but <laughs> probably about five to 10 of uh, Suncrest Uncle Sam. This is a rare picture of him, I found this. Uh, he's a beauty. Yeah, I believe his breeder sent this to me. I think Pat Patrick sent this to me when I uh, did some research about her program. Of course, she loved her ponies. And uh, yeah, he uh, he was a beauty, and he uh, he stayed around a long time. Here's kicking off the '80s, 1980, in Hutchison, Kansas. This would have been the World Show, and uh, this was one of his first riders. Of course, he went to many uh, famous riders and POAs. Uh, Kent from uh, Arizona, and then the Sparks family. I think three different siblings or four rode him for the Sparks in California, and uh, he was on the cover probably six or seven times this is a cover photo that last one was a color cover photo so well kent taylor right or is it tyler taylor so, taylor, kent yeah, taylor i had it right kent yep. taylor yeah and he shows quarter horses now he's kind of a a big name in the amateur quarter horse uh, circuit and he rode suncrest uncle sam all over the country he was high point in the nation and then this is one of the sparks girls i believe in 86 this might be jennifer I think hopefully she's watching tonight she sent me some pictures 
So uh, I know her sister Tiffany wrote him too. I believe this is Jennifer here. He was actually grand champion in 1986, which I didn't think he would be. I was already judging a little bit by then, you know, amateur wise or as a kid. And there was some tough gildings at that show, like Series Sparkle Champagne was still kind of in his prime. And but this guy was a little older. He was starting to show his age a little bit, and he still pulled off. Of course, it was Superior Grand that year. Remember in '86, Susie? They had the because yep. that's when the height changed. You know, it changed yep. in '85, but the first show was '86, and we had Junior the Senior. I didn't like it because it was just so different. But that's the only year they did that. They went away from that in '87 again, and. Uh, but anyway, I better read some comments here. A lot of people are saying so. There's Jen, uh, the one person that just commented. Sam was my boy. Yep, thanks for watching tonight. So uh, your family was a big part of the 80s for sure in POAs, the Sparks family. Uh, Tracy, never seen the photo. Good idea for a show. Where are they now? Yeah, we ne I need to do a show, Where Are They Now? That, I could just do a podcast on that. That would take years to cover all the kids that <laughs> showed POAs, you know, and now we're... What are you doing if you covered three or four people uh, an episode? So, um. And I think um, when I had gone back and forth a little bit on Facebook with one of the Spark, I think it was Jennifer, that he ended up passing away on their farm. I think he was buried on their farm. Am I right, Jen? I mean, you guys kept him till. Oh, I think they kept him till He was never going then. anywhere. Right. Yep. Once yeah. you had him, he was never going For, anywhere. Forever home, yep. He was sure of striking... Uh, POA and he didn't change color you know he might have at the end but here he was an age you know he was prime here and he he was just as dark as could be that helped with his just his whole look and image too so now this is Tiffany I believe uh, later uh, this is Dick Korn from Indiana presenting her with a high point saddle so this would have been in probably 80 let's see 89 I bet Indianapolis yeah the show was in 89 because it was in Oklahoma Oklahoma City, 86, 7, and 8. So this was in Indianapolis. And we have a lot of good Gary Hamilton photos from the 80s. So he was a great, you know, horse photographer. And he did a lot of POA stuff in the 70s and 80s. So a majority of these photos are going to be from him tonight. Uh, he lived until he was 38, Susie. Jen just, just said oh. that. Wow, 38. 38. Can you imagine that? Uh, so that's when people say, oh, you can't push them hard. You got to be careful what you do. This guy was showed down the road. I mean, he was taken care of, you know, beloved like a family member, but he was shown in all events. You know, he did. And cart he was and the everything. first, wasn't he the first winner of the freestyle reigning? I think well? he was. Yeah, I might be wrong. And they did an Uncle Sam theme. I mean, how could you not win that? Right. And plus, he was fantastic. Right. So. I remember you had a great, you had I, the Ice Castles one. I used to watch that on the video. I wasn't there at the show, but my, my mom and dad and I used to pop in the cassette and watch that all the time. It was so cool. That was a fun year. That, that was, was a fun, fun year. year. Yeah. So getting great, back a little closer, closer to home, here's Connie Gibson. She showed Mr. Cool, and we were pretty young when she was about right age out, but uh, he was a powerful stallion. She showed him as a stallion. Later, I think he was gilded, but... I can remember them doing the games. They were they'd go wide open, you know, from top buzzer to buzzer. So, uh, of course, an Eau Claire family. Her dad Larry got a lot of people into POAs. I know uh, Linda and Bob Dembski are watching tonight, and uh, a lot of family, a lot of people from Eau Claire uh, got into POAs because of Larry. I think Kelly Curtis and that whole group. So, so there's Mr. Cool again. They promoted him as a stallion. So. Okay, Tracy said, I actually competed against him with my stepsister. She's talking about uh, Uncle Sam, of course, because she lived in Washington, you know, for a while. Tracy did, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's cool. So here's uh, another famous pair in POAs in the 80s, Darcy Rogers and Salty Bunny Britches. So that's another one with the flax and mane kind of, you know, and a pretty, I always thought uh, Salty Bunny Britches was a, a cool looking POA. And, uh, of course, they did a lot of stuff. Darcy, they were from, what, Tennessee, Susie, I think? Or some... Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not putting you on the spot, but Tracy will know. But I'm pretty sure they were from, I think they were from Tennessee or around that area. So uh, Probably, yeah. Oh, uh, goodness. Yeah, so. I don't remember. I just remember she, Megan Eckroat, and I were all right around that same age. Right. Um, where we kind of both had, like, in the same year, like moved up eight and under to nine through twelve and things like that. Okay. So 
Yeah. But boy, I don't remember where her family was from. But well, I think participation, that, everyone. Type uh, it in a, if you know. I, I'm 90 percent sure. Actually, I would bet money on it. Yep, Tracy just said Tennessee. I would have bet yeah. folding money on it that it was Tennessee. So it probably says in this ad here. I got it right in front. Yep, Tennessee year end awards on this ad. So I included this one because uh, it shows him doing some stuff, the scurry and yeah. They were number one in the nation, probably in, well, it might say in this ad, but 86 or somewhere in there, so. Okay, here's another POA that was around quite a while in the 80s. He was shown by several different families. Oklahoma's black gold, he was kind of a husky, right on the limit POA. I remember when it was in 54. He was always one of those real big POAs. I mean, he measured in and everything, but uh, he caught your eye, just from his body, kind of and he became a supreme champion. You, you remember him, don't you, Susie? Oh, yeah, Oki. Yeah. Oki. They called him Oki. They called him Oki. And I, if anyone remembers, it says Julie, but I remember Katrina Jurger and then Chris, Chris Buter, I believe, wrote him. And um, I don't know who after that. But I remember I'm, Chris I'm sure Buter, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who Julie is. And I don't know what so. age, I was trying to judge the hairdo if it was 84 or so but this might have been i know he showed in the 70s too the late 70s so mm -hmm. uh, yep tracy just said katrina jerger uh so but i don't know who julie maybe somebody will know who julie is julie might be watching that'd be cool so yeah <laughs> there's people that watch this show from all over uh that you know i don't realize is watching and sometimes they'll send me messages when i'm driving home Every Tuesday night, Susie, my phone's usually going ding, ding, because people are sending me <laughs> messages and wanting to be a part of a show, maybe, or whatever. But uh, Okay, so here's uh, JBJ's Made of Straw, another famous POA, was born in the 70s and made a name for herself in the 80s. She actually won the second versatility contest uh, at the international show, so in 1986 with Kelly King, I have a picture of that, but first she was ridden by Eula Gayweiler's daughter, uh, Julie, I believe, Julie Gayweiler, and uh, she got a lot of, I don't know if she supreme this filly, because they sold her still pretty young, but she got a lot of points on her, I know that. Um, so I think, i uh, got from Illinois, right, Oki. Okay, Josie Gardner from Illinois, wrote Oki, somebody put that, yeah. That must have been after Chris Peter. Jody, they meant Jody because they, they wrote again. And again, I'm seeing Facebook user. I can't tell who's who wrote that. If you want to put your name afterwards or something. Uh, she is in the pedigree of my JBJs. Uh, yep, she is, Tracy. That's right. She's in. She only had one full. This mare lived to be an older mare, and she was kind of like Kenwell's barmaid. You know, Kenwell's barmaid never produced a full. She was just a, a show mare her whole life, and this mare was too. But then they did breed her out in California and they got one full out of her and then uh, he went on to have some foals and and uh, we'll probably talk about that in future episodes too so Jackie's going to be an episode uh, in the future Susie Jackie Blazer of course she's known now the last 20 years or so as Jackie Guthrie um, but yeah. she's going to be an episode and that's going to be a close one to me because she really took me under my wing and uh, your parents and her and their certain families, Arnie Marker, certain Minnesota and Wisconsin families that are dear to my heart because they meant a lot to me because they didn't treat me like a little kid. You know what I mean? They, I would <laughs> rattle off pedigrees and stuff. And they didn't say, hey, shoe kid, go in the corner. You know what I mean? They listened to me. So I remember traveling to shows with your dad. Uh, he came and picked me up one time and went to came all the way up to Kimball and picked me up in the morning and we went to Sleepy Eye or somewhere down there or St. James, St. James to watch you show uh, Dottie and he talked the whole time you know and we talked about transistor radios and uh, 1930s TV when it first came out and uh, the Vikings and the twins and you know it was just that's things you remember you know throughout time so um, yeah, my dad was a teacher. He loved kids. He just yeah. loved talking uh, to kids. Yeah, he did. And But again, he didn't talk to me like, you know, like I was a little kid. Now, your mom, she, I love your mom, too, and she, you know, she did so much for me. 
with that book and everything. But sometimes I was afraid of your mom because she was an English teacher, and I spoke. <laughs> I still speak pretty bad English, so I'm I would, still afraid of my mom because she was an English teacher. Yeah, I mean, I would. I had to have a lot of guts, Susie, to ask her to edit that book. Let me tell you, because I'm like, oh, this could be bad. But uh, she was very kind, and very, some of the things she said about that book is, she said you handled controversy subjects so well, and I memorized almost everything she wrote back to me when she critiqued it and edited it for me. And, and uh, of course, she really loved the subject because it was about POAs, and she knew pretty much everything, you know, all the POAs in there. So, so here, getting back to the show, but here's Kelly uh, winning the versatility. This would have been in 86 with uh, Sadie, they called her, made of straw. Of course, here's the first versatility winner. That was a big change in POAs when they added the versatility competition. That was in 1985 when they did that. And this is John Katzenberger and Darlin' Jill. And of course, she became a superstar, do everything mayor, and, and had a bunch of foals. I think she had 20 some foals for the Katzenberger. Well, and they were always by her side at the horse shows. Right. I mean, that well, mayor was showing every year. She was incredible. Well, I got a picture here I'm going to skip to because uh, this one right here, this is an incredible picture. Now, this is Jared. He's the third brother, of course. Uh, the youngest of the Katzenbergers, the three boys. But let's look, read this caption here. Marin Full, she won that. Uh, Indian costume, which is now Native American costume, eight and under boys, and flags nine through 12. That's all at a national show. She won Marin Full, <laughs> the costume class, and flags at a national event. I mean, that's a pretty cool mare that can do that. That means she had a baby on her side, you know, and they showed, so in halter. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's and put pretty, up with a costume. And put up with a costume. Yeah, and that's a heavy costume there. Let me tell you, they, yeah, Katzenbergers. They be believed in uh, tradition. You know, Judy grew up in POAs, of course. Her dad was a director early on, and they believed in cart driving classes, and they believed in the costume classes, and they their kids excelled at it too. So, somebody said, "Kent, you are a star speaker now." I don't know who said that. Maybe that was your mom, but. I don't know who, who mentioned that. So. so, Susie, I thought you'd get a kick out of this. This was the top ten of the first versatility, uh, the results. And I don't know how many of they allowed. I know they used to cut it down to 25, and now, you know, it's under that. But uh, look at the who's who, even the kids. But darling Jill. Insane. Yeah, it's, look at that. I was in it. It was 25. <laughs> they cut it to 25. 25. I was in it, but you, I did not make the top 10. Those you were points, in it with uh, Ringo, Ooh. right? With W. Yes. Yeah. He's, look at those ponies. Yeah. Darlin' Jill, Hall of Fame, Serious Sparkle Champagne, one of my favorite gildings of all time. Still to this, this day, I use his picture to show people what a POA should look like, and he was born in the 70s. Uh, Itchy's Mr. Barn, Kelly Bridges, famous team. Great uh, gilding. Suncrest Uncle Sam, we just looked at 10 pictures of him. Famous Hall of Fame POA. FCR's Wobbly Bar, we're about ready to talk about that chapter in the 80s with Kim Sims. She rewrote history and did a lot of promotional stuff for POAs. And then, of course, Mary Elizabeth Douglas was famous for showing one of the best POAs ever, Rutledge's uh, Yoka Chigger Pep, but this was her younger horse, Dragon and Chiquita. And, uh, and then Caddo's Miss Chickadee, that was a Wisconsin mare with Dottie Jones. And Salty Spice was a supreme champion. V BVD's Dusty Rose and then Redeemer's Omen, all famous POAs. And most of those kids were who's who of, of uh, 13th or 18 riders at the time too. So yeah, I thought that was worth, I could do an episode just on that list right there. <laughs> oh yeah, so, amazing points. Right. So here we are at the 85 Indiana State Fair, and this is Kim Sims with FCR's uh, Wobbly Bar. The thing that struck me about Kim when I remember her riding and, and seeing her is she looked, to me, she always looked older. You know, she looked mature. She rode mature, and she just looked, she didn't look like a girl out there. She looked like a woman, like a lady, and I think that helped her. And Wobbly Bar wasn't the tallest POA in the world, uh, but of course she was so talented. And the thing that Kim did that set herself apart was she won the Challenge of the Breeds. The first year she was second, and then they invited her back, I believe, in 85, and she won it representing POAs, and uh, she showed against all different breeds, and that was a big shot in the arm for the Pony of the Americas. Yeah, and I think there was a, I don't know if you have a picture of this, but there was a magazine cover of her doing eventing, and she's like, 
galloping through water or something. Well, I and got it. Do you have that photo? It's there it is. So, it's so dramatic. It's so. <laughs> yep, that's that team right there. You're looking at Susie. You're the perfect co-host. You need... <laughs> I had no idea you yeah. had that photo. We didn't practice as people, so. We yeah. did not. Yeah. I, that was one of the most, um, I don't know, just dramatic photos of a, of a POA at that time that yeah. I'd ever seen. Well, the 80, like 85 through 87, there was some very unique uh, covers. And I took a picture of this cover before I even dawned on me who it was. I'm like, yeah, I'm taking this. And I said, wait a minute, that needs to go anyway. That's Kim and, and Wobbly Bar. But I was going to put it on there even if I didn't know who it was, you know, because it's just such a cool photo but yeah that I have some more stuff to an ultimate team effort here she is driving they had to jump and drive and and do barrels and of course pleasure and everything so and like I say she wasn't a 56 inch POA it was before 56 inch and I don't think she was even 54 wobbly bar but uh, yeah just the there they are at the I don't know how she got away wearing that white outfit. My mom wouldn't have allowed me even in halter to wear a white shirt, so. Because <laughs> I would get it a white hat and white chaps. Oh, man, that's something else. But Well, and she was a trendsetter, too, and she also wore a, she wore her top button one open, and she wore a scarf, a white scarf on her neck. Right. And she kind of set a trend for the rest of the girls. You know, then you kind of saw that trend, and it right. was like she, whatever Kim wore one year, you would see the next, the next uh, oh, year, it see definitely, the other, she some definitely of the other girls was. with outfits like that. Oh, yeah, right. It, she it, was it, a trendsetter for sure. Yep, yeah. definitely. And, and like it, I say, and, and she I mean looked like a, sense. go ahead, yeah. Hmm. She looked like a model out there. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? She just looked so perfect and her clothes were crisp. I know her mom worked hard to uh, do that. Your wife don't allow you to wear white a white shirt either. My wife, just Monica, just said <laughs> she don't allow me to wear white. So I didn't grow out of that. So. Yeah, here's a good uh, two pictures of Kim when she was younger, of course, over on the right in the younger wobbly bar, and then the pair when she's aging out, I imagine, is what that is. So, And Kim became an equestrian, too. She rode, I think, eventers or she rode something. Uh, and then she came back in POAs, too, in 19 and over years later because uh, it okay. wasn't around. I know she did dressage. Dressage, did maybe dressage that's what she did, dressage, mm -hmm. yeah. And then she did come back and raise some and showed some. She had Johnny got a look. Uh, she moved to Arkansas, actually. So uh, I don't know where Kim is today, Tracy. Um, we need to find out. That's a where are you to now show. So I need help. I need detectives to, to go out and look. So I do know where Tammy Neblock is because she talks to me on Facebook and uh, uh, private messenger and stuff. Of course, the Neblock family was a big part of POAs. And, from Illinois and they always were well mounted had great POAs and this was one of them this is East Acres Gold Bar they called him uh, what Kino I think Kino Kino, Kino. Yeah. and then later they had Reno they had Lucky Lad they named him Reno her sister rode him I actually have some pictures of him too even though they got more popular in the 90s but yep Tammy was always a force to be reckoned and like I say they always had uh, nice looking POAs and, okay here's another now there was three Jones uh, kids from Wisconsin, Dottie, Katie, and Matt was their little brother, I believe. He was the youngest, I think, wasn't he? Well, yes. Yeah. And uh, again, they always had great POAs. Uh, their dad, uh, Doc Jones, he actually bought a POA from me years later. I didn't, don't know if you knew that, but he bought a yearling from me at the 2000 uh, national sale, and he had him for a stallion for a little while. But he, he was the record seller that year, yearling colts and. Um, I I don't know if he remembered me from Minnesota or not, but I remember when they had uh, WRE Hot to Trot. Remember that Philly out of Super oh, yeah. Sun and yeah, and then of course they had Doc's Tough Joe and Caddo's Miss Chickadee. Of course, the best one they probably ever had was Kenwell's Barmaid. They were one of the first families to show her. Here's a cover photo of that that picture. Good Casey Montgomery picture there. And now here's. Jones lent Kenwell's barmaid to Tisha Tennant. She was another good rider. She was from Texas. She was always a good showman as well. And uh, had, I think she rode a barkeeper's, uh, barkeeper's bandit or something like that. I think a loud Oh, color. that sounds right. Yeah. Barkeeper's think, bandit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, and then she happened to ride his half sister in this. She won three uh, classes in this picture here. So, and then here's a picture 
three-time winner at the 87 International Show. So, of course, Kenwell's Barmaid went on to become, you know, in a short, short list of elite mares. Like I say, she never had a foal. I don't think she ever did games. I might be wrong, but she became a pleasure phenomenon, and she was in Decatur, Illinois for a big chunk of her life at Tom Walmsley's stable. I believe that's where she's buried, but uh, she lived a long, healthy life and very famous mare. Uh, and here she is with Matt. I don't know if all three Jones uh, kids wrote. I had a cover photo of uh, Dottie, and it didn't make the cut. Not my fault. Just it slipped through the the computer, just like we had problems with the phone in the beginning, sometimes the pictures. I had 118 images tonight and 116 of them came over. I'm like, okay, who's the two I'm going to have to say I'm sorry to? So, and that was one of them, one of the Jones. But, uh, okay, and then here's when uh, they sold Barmaid and she went to Joey Ravelli. I remember that. Yeah, and I think you and I talked a little bit about, like, Barmaid was the time like there was like this period in the 80s where there was kind of that that rivalry between people who wanted it to stay 54 inches right. for the height limit and people who wanted the 56. And if you were a taller kid, you wanted 56. Right. But the people who had bred for 54, it was like, do we? What are we going to do? And and I think Barmaid was one of those ponies that when they raised it to 56, she was eligible right. and just changed. It was a little easier breed. for her, yeah, right, because yeah. she was really had a lot of horse bred. Both her parents were ponies, but her sire was an own grandson of three bars, you know, a thoroughbred. So she had close-up thoroughbred and quarter horse breeding. So, yeah, it did help bring back some and save some POAs, of course. And uh, Yeah, that That's was gorgeous. I mean, she's oh, one she of those is, ones we never would have seen otherwise. Right, and, and she roamed. You know, I have pictures of her as a baby, and and as a yearling and she was a beautiful mare with a blanket and just and she was solid with a little blanket well then when she roamed she kept that one dark leg and that was so unique to have that dark leg without a sock and then the other legs had socks and yeah she like i say she's up there in the top if you were to make a list like of your top songs top movies top poa mares she would be in the top five probably or you know and almost everybody that would say that so uh, Oh, the fight over the 56 limit was terrible. I knew Tracy would chime in about that because <laughs> it was pretty bad. My it dad was. At the was time. Oh, yeah. He, we just got into it. My dad had sunk a small fortune in some brood mares and stuff. And he, uh, all his mares were short. He had one quarter horse at the time. He'd sold his other quarter horses. And, but we had a 50 inch stallion drift with Siri Tomahawk. Of course, he was a legend in Minnesota you know, little stud, and POAs were moving on from him, and here we had him, and uh, Dad sold him then in 85. He's like, well, I, I don't need Tomahawk because I can breed these quarter mares to a bigger stay. And so uh, it did change the look of POAs and the bloodlines and everything. So here was a small stay, and, and then I think he was gilded later, but this is uh, Stormy Riches Jr. I know you remember him. Kim Sims started him, and this is young Tommy Morris uh, riding him. So he was a famous POA for a long time. He was probably even more famous in the 90s, Stormy Riches Jr. He showed a long time. Um, yeah, I remember standing behind Kim Sims and wondering who he was because she generally <laughs> wore, rode wobbly. And here she was on this little stallion about to go into Western riding, and I had to go in after her. And she went in, and I was like, well, those were the most beautiful lead changes I've pretty much ever seen. And she, of course, won. Of course. And, of course, I had, to, I had to be the one to go in after her. Right, and he was a stallion, and he was little. He wasn't big at all. <laughs> he was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yep, that's back when it was 50 and under. He was like 49 and three quarters or something like that. Yeah, so. Uh, and then here's Tommy with... Uh, one of their homebreds. This is 2D Skipper Babe. She became a, a legend, a Hall of Famer. And Tom was one of the first kids to ride her, I believe. But she she showed all over the country. So that would have been probably in Ohio by the background there. The Bricks, you remember the Bricks in Columbus, Ohio. I wasn't at that show, but. Yeah. I always Columbus remember. And, go ahead. Oh, I, I think one of the things, too, is I don't know if anyone else's ponies got this, but. 
we went in there in Columbus, and and uh, some ponies actually got like a Columbus cough, and like people were like, oh, like ponies left cough, and we're like, what's going on? And then yeah. people said, oh, it must have been the Columbus cough. So everybody talked about, right. um, I don't know. The Columbus Cup. The Columbus Cup. Well, it didn't go back to Columbus. I know that. So, but that happens sometimes. I've seen that other at other arenas, and I've seen in Des Moines one time they had sand fleas or something, and it was especially the leopards in halter. They did something to the arena after that, but it was just biting the legs of the yearlings and the babies, and they wouldn't stand still, and they kept kicking at their bellies, and yeah, so different different things can happen. But I remember looking at this photo of the bricks when you were. At that show, Bud Campbell, Bud and Bertie was at our house, and we were anxiously awaiting a phone call from your mom to see how Dottie did in Halter. That was her first big show, and I, she took fourth place, which was great, you yeah. know. But uh, and I was like, I was all disappointed because you know people had been filling us up, like all our horse friends and non-POA people, the neighbors to them. She was the greatest POA they ever saw. You know, I mean, she was a good POA, but to the, they they didn't go to the shows, POA shows. So they, oh, that's a, she's gonna win everything. And I, I remember Bud saying, fourth place, you should be happy with that. <laughs> and he was, it was a huge class. Oh, huge really class. Good. And she'd never, she didn't know how to stand up or anything. So I was right. like, just like trying to be all pleasant, and the judge came smiling <laughs> and looked at my cute pony, and right. and uh, yeah, and she. For fourth place in that class, I just remember looking up and down, hoping we, hoping we pinned it all. Well, so, in '83 mares, I mean, Dox Foxy Lady was born in '83, and there was some famous uh, mares in '83. So I know you guys showed against each other the whole, whole time, you know, basically. So, uh, and they looked a lot of, they looked similar, Dox Foxy Lady and Sandy Tough Dots. So, so here's one I alluded to earlier, Rutledge's Yoka Chigger Pep, and of course this is. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Douglas from Indiana. She was one of the great uh, show kids of all time. And, and Rutledge's Yoka Chigger Pep won with other people too, before her and after her, but she won with other POAs. And of course, her dad had the hat on the cover in 1986. I think it was the December issue when she aged out or close to aging out. Remember that? They took a whole bunch of pages and he had his old hat as the cover. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was the I first. Remember that. Yeah, first cover without a, and then when I was on the board, someone who's going to be my guest, I won't name names, but she can talk about it when she's a guest later, she had a wedding picture on the cover and they wouldn't allow it, they made her put a picture of a horse and I went back to precedent, I said, hey, you guys did this 20 years ago, but no one remembered it, you know, none of the directors remembered it, but I lost and they made her put, put a horse on the cover with her photo, so. Uh, oh, that's so funny. And so funny you mentioned wedding, too, because I remember that uh, Mary Elizabeth Douglas, they had a really unique costume one year. <laughs> they did a shotgun wedding. Do you they, remember that? I sure do, yeah. That was They had a full-on shotgun wedding as their costume, and yeah. they had a full-on wedding party and, and everything in, in the class. I going, believe going her around. dad was quite a character. I never met the man, yep. but I think he was just a cool guy that, you know, come up with stuff like that. and. And they showed like a hundred and some pictures from her as a little baby on up to when she graduated high school, when she aged out, when he had that cover photo. And they just, it was pages, like five or six pages of little photos of her. And of course her brother showed too. She had a brother, I can't remember his name, but he showed in POAs, so. Yep, I wish I had more pictures of uh, Chigger Pep, but I think he stood grand like five times at the International. He had such a long neck and just a, a round hip, but uh, he was a better, probably better shower than he was a halter horse, but he ended up doing good. This is their young mare. This came from uh, Texas. This is Dragged Ends Chiquita, bred by Norm Stevenson, of course the famous Dragged Ends, and she did well on, on that mare. She was another mare that was right up there on the height limit. You know, she was all a 54 at the wither, so. And, a big and she and Mary Elizabeth also was one of those trendsetters too. So in this black and white picture, you can't see, but she wore a bright red shirt with navy blue chaps. And that was different. And it was and nobody else wore that. Like right. you just could see her from a mile away. And right. so like she was kind of a trendsetter as well. And then of course the next year people wanted to put a colors like that together, but she was right. She was a trendsetter. She was a that trendsetter, way. that's for sure. And she stood out too, not just because of that, just her ability and everything. You can oh, even yeah. see in this picture, yeah, she just was, and she won a lot of stuff. Well, here's another perfect timing picture. Look at all these high point plaques. I know you won one with uh, 
Dottie, you won High Point Mare. So I have one hanging in my garage because you guys gave it to us. But uh, look, I don't know how many there is there. 12 or so, them are all the plaques she won. Uh, that's in 87, but them would have been 86 High Point plaques. Uh, so yeah, that's her and her family. That's her dad over there smiling with that hat. That's the hat that was on the cover. So yeah, another cool POA family, cool memories. So, And here's another cool family from Kansas, the Schwartz family, Schwartz family. And uh, of course, Chief Beaver Bridges was a big part of their life for years and years. Uh, there's three or four girls, I think, that showed POAs. They all did great. This is, uh, I think she's the youngest one. This is Jenny Lee. Yep, that's Jenny Lee. Jenny. And Jill, Jill rode him before. Yep, right? Jill rode him probably in 82, yeah. 83, somewhere in there. Yep, I remember. There's a good picture. I don't have it in here, but I've I used it for something else. But uh, she's on this horse, who was a stallion, and Jeff Koroleski's on Cinnamon Straw. And they were voted like the king and queen of the world show. It was like 82 or something like that when they brought the world show back and uh, it was kind of a cool picture so yeah but Jenny Lee was always cool you know she was older than me so that was one of those kids just like if I was in seventh or eighth grade and there was a senior you know she was just a cool girl you know stone nice could be. you couldn't find anyone nicer than right Jenny Lee. and she I actually met sure. her later because she came back and she was active in the Kansas club and yeah really nice her family was a big part. Her dad was the president of the board and stuff for years, and they uh, big part of POAs. So here's one of those covers. Now I don't even know who this is, but uh, this was one of those active covers uh, in '85. They had about three or four of them in a row that uh, Western Horseman or Pony Rider magazines like that would have loved to have some of these photos. Because here's another one, a jumping one, and then of course that one of Kim. Uh, going through the water that eventing photo but these are just some good memories from the 80s now I wish I had some better pictures of this horse because he's one of my favorites and I got a quick story Susie I'm going to tell uh, my of course this is Siri Sparkle Champagne and in this picture it's Stephanie uh, Esman with him they were from Ohio but a lot of families showed him he was you know I was into confirmation and halter and this gilding was built about as good as any uh, ever even today and he was so unique his color his name fit him perfectly Siri Sparkle Champagne of course he came from the person that registered the second POA ever Siri Chief and uh, so he's got a great background came from Arizona but uh, in 1986 I don't know how many people do this nowadays but he, uh, we went to the international show my first one I was so giddy you remember how I'd get at shows because I was a nerd looking at all these POAs and the man. You're a kid in the candy store. Yeah, that's what I was. And Dad had let me, we would walk up and down the aisles till 2, 3 in the morning. It was way looser than it is now. Like there wasn't, of course it was hot. It was Oklahoma City and the, there wasn't blankets and stuff. But a trailer pulls up from Colorado and out pops this horse. And I knew who it was right away. And my dad, I was too nervous. I was being a little kid, even though I was, I think I turned 14 at that show, but he walked up to the man. I believe it was Mr. How do you pronounce it? Nyswanger is mm -hmm. that's who owned him at the time. And dad said, Hey, my son, you know, he really loves your, uh, POA you know, and two in the morning, just off the trailer from Colorado to Oklahoma city, the guy starts setting him up. <laughs> right. And it was a sidewalk right outside the barn here in Oklahoma city. I could go to it right now and uh, show you. And, uh, he starts setting him up and, and you know there I am looking at this horse and I'll never forget that moment you know and I didn't talk to the guy I thanked him and dad and I think we went on our way we we never really became friends or met the people but I always loved that horse and I felt honored that I got to see him in person you know and uh, of course he went on after that and did a lot of stuff uh, with families Grayson's had him in Georgia and of course Ohio and he was in Colorado for a big part of his life but uh, well, I remember when Vonda was graduating, the, the talk of the show in Oklahoma was who was going to buy Sparky. <laughs> right. And then we found out it was Stephanie Espin, and we were like, wow, right. that's going to be amazing. Yeah, and I so, remember rumors were going around. I don't even, honestly, I don't even remember what they were now, but you know how gossip is and people out behind the stalls and the trailers, you know. It was a lot of money for the day because he was one of the top, top gildings going. Of course... Uncle Sam stayed 
with the Sparks for a big part, you know, the whole end of his life. So he wasn't available. And there was just a few of those really top gildings. And he was so pretty to look at too, just like this picture. He did not even have his ears up and he's just so cool looking, so. Yeah, and he was versatile. Oh, he, he was, was versatile. one of those ones who could do everything and yeah. he was beautiful. And he was beautiful, yeah, that's true, so. So we move on to another famous gilding. This is Pow Wow Zip Bars, and of course Jeff Otten's from a, a great POA family in Missouri. The Otten kids uh, showed and later judged POAs and stuff. They're equestrians, lifelong equestrians. But Pow Wow Zip Bars was actually pretty old in this picture already. He had a lot of longevity in POAs. Uh, he won a lot of. I don't know. You remember seeing him in person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he won like 30 some classes all by himself. The reason I know that is because his sire is a quarter horse and when I did my research he's the only POA that ever won by that stay and so that's how I could keep it separated. <laughs> so uh, I've been kind of slack, sorry viewers, I've been busy uh, yakking and talking to Susie and I haven't been watching all the comments. I see Tracy's keeping it going there and other people so we have 112 hearts. Again tell your uh, Tell your friends and family and alumni, it's really important. There's some people out there that might be featured tonight that would love to watch this show and just don't, they don't know about it. So it's on POA History Group on Facebook and it'll be pinned up the top, at the top with 34 other episodes. We do them on Tuesday nights live and uh, sometimes we have some hiccups, right Susie, like we did tonight, but we're working <laughs> through it. It's, I think everybody can hear you just fine, so. Uh, All right. Tonight, well, the Quast, do you remember the Lori Quast and Wendy Quast? Oh, still yeah. In Minnesota, and oh, I mentioned, mentioned Lori earlier. Pretty, yeah. Yeah, and you had mentioned them in an earlier episode, and I was like, hey, they're mentioning you, and they're like, wait, what? Right, and that's what I'm now talking Now they're members. <laughs> yeah, now they're members. That's, and it's funny when I, like I did an episode on the Van Eyck's from Florida, and now there's like eight members of the group from Plant City, Florida. Or I'll do an episode on somebody from Wisconsin or something, there'll be 12 members from Eau Claire now. Like when Kelly was on, Kelly Curtis was a guest during the George Bishop episode. And all of a sudden the number, because one thing about Facebook, it's so business friendly basically for marketing and media. It tells you the uh, demographic, like 88% of the people that are members of this group are women. And then it breaks down the age even, you know, if they know it, some of them they don't know. Well, it also breaks down the city. So like there's 42 people from Edmond, Oklahoma that are members. And then there's 20 some from Oklahoma City because it's just the Morris connection, you know, Dave and Bonnie Morris. And then of course later uh, the McKenzie's and stuff. There's so many people that were in POA. So it's kind of, kind of fun. I'm listening. Do you see that? Susan? Lori Quast just said, I'm listening. <laughs> there, so, there you go. I always Yay, remember. Hi, Lori Quast. Lori and her blonde hair in uh, Campbell's Calypso. So oh, yeah. that horse went up and down as much as he went, you know, but he was loud leopard or roaned into a leopard and he was a, he was kind and of Campbell's a- Campbell's Jill, a Campbell's darling Jill. there that did everything. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, Campbell's that pony, yeah. really fun And pony. they raised some babies out of Campbell's Jill in Freckles Ferry and, you know, they were connected to Bud, so. And then, uh, oh, they had the Angel's Mare. Remember the, the leopard? She rode yep. her in and pleasure. Which was the one that was CJ? That they, was, that was her. I think. Well, no, CJ was the baby. CJ, CJ was the baby. Yeah, okay. that was Jill's baby. So gotcha. yeah, yeah, CJ was uh, Fury's Princess. I think they named her or something like that. She actually placed with Lori's mom Linda in the Slick Sire. Remember, uh, nice. Leonard was like third with double with Double Deck, who was won everything that year, and then. Uh, Linda slipped in there for fourth place in the very prestigious. It was just the third year for that futurity. So I better go back. Here's Pow Wow Zip Bars years later with Jody uh, Gardner. I think her name was mentioned earlier uh, for another POA. Yep, miss y'all. CJ was Jill's baby. Yep, Lori just said that. CJ. I remember. I can see the picture of her with the white background in Des Moines and everything. So. Here's a name we haven't covered yet, Brittany Green and 4M's Hands Go Man Go. That was a short little One of the best people. names ever. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, they want a list of stuff while well, it's right here. I mean, they want everything. Of course, they were from the Southeast as well. And uh, I always remember the Rogers and the Green family from down in that area, and they, they had good POAs. I think that one was, yeah, for sure fast. Here's another picture. This was at that Ohio show again at the Columbus, the 1985 international show. Brittany Green and 
forearms, hands, go man, go. So here's another famous gilding that we grew up watching for sure. Uh, KC Colorado Chief and Kelly Curtis. So the very first show my dad and I ever went to, Susie, was in Minnesota in, uh, uh, not Wyndham, but... Uh, Austin? Well, it was Wyndham, I guess. Is that where the big equestrian center is now? In Wyndham? Yes. Or is it, yeah. Well, we went there. Um, with, no, what town am I... Winona. 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 And it was before that equestrian center, it was at a stables, remember? They had POA shows at that stables. It yep. was yep. And that's where we went. We went to Bud Campbell's house and dropped off a mare and then we went to the show early in the morning. And this girl comes riding up to us in the hallway, the aisleway of the barn, and we didn't know hardly anybody. And it was Kelly Curtis and she said, Hello, my name's Kelly Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> and you know she was probably nine to twelve then. It was the early '80s, and uh, my dad's like, "Yeah, this we're we're at a good place," you know. And then we met your mom at that show, and uh, we met some other people, of course. We already knew the Markers and we knew the Campbells, but yeah, we there was always a special spot in my heart for Kelly Curtis because she come riding up to us, and it was like she sensed that we weren't, you know, we hadn't been in it. She was welcoming us to the show, you know, and to the POAs, and, and it's like she knew she'd never seen us, so she was going to say hello to us. So, so that's, that's awesome. And yeah. did she just was she riding around with just bailing twine around his neck? Because <laughs> I'm she not did that sure. Too, I think he it, was so good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was bareback. I'm pretty positive she was. She bareback. was oftentimes bareback and yeah. maybe some bailing twine, and right. she would ride all over the fairgrounds like that. Of course, she made this gilding famous, Colorado Chief, and he went on. Here's a uh, young Brock Allen. Uh, he showed him afterwards and did well, won a bunch of stuff. Of course, he came from uh, George Bishop, the St. Nick's. He, Kelly changed his name, her, her mom, Jean, did, but uh, he was from that program. But then here, here's a string you're talking about. Here she's bareback on her young stallion. This is Biddo Tough Cash, of course, that they raised. He was a Doc's tough dude's son. And uh, this is the horse she really went on, you know, as a teenager with. And, and won a lot of stuff. He was in your class too. Basically, he wasn't a filly, but he in junior you had to compete against this pair because he's yeah. the same age as Dottie. He's a, a 83. So him and Foxy Lady would have been uh, siblings on the sire side. We so. were all trying to get the junior horse award at the international. Oh show. yeah, because that, that was big. I that, did not win it. <laughs> you did not win it. Well, <laughs> you don't have to hang your head. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to hang your head because that was some, <laughs> some tough competition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were really good. They were good, yeah. So and there she is winning junior reigning at that at that eighty well that's eighty six I think. Yeah. So he would have been three there. Yeah, that junior pony contest was tough, boy, it was something else. And so here's another Midwestern POA. I know I've shown a lot of Midwest POAs, but that's almost the theme tonight. It's the eighties POAs that rock the eighties, but we grew up in Minnesota, so we're gonna remember the the ones from Wisconsin and Iowa and Minnesota better, but Cuyahoga's Bambi showed all over the country. And of course this is, I think, Troy with her, Troy Kozer, so. She was a great little mare. Oh yeah. Yeah, she won the, the Small Mare Award many times. Here's another, well her name says a little white mare, and this is Taylor. Thompson from Oklahoma. Oh, I was hoping you'd have a picture of her. <laughs> Everyone loved the little white mare. Everyone and loved even the little... announcer. The announcer loved saying the oh, little right. And well, in first place, the little white mare. Right. Well, there's an award named the little that. white mare. I don't know if they still do it. Tracy can come on and say, but they uh, there was a little white mare award for years and years. It might have been an equitation award. I'm not sure on that, but yeah, I threw that one in there because that's one of them you mentioned. And when I seen her picture, I'm like, yes, I score. So. Yeah. Definitely. And then there was one of the little girls had like completely decked that pony out in pink. And oh yeah. So the pony was all white, and then right. everything was pink from the breast collar, the saddle blanket, everything was pink, right. and hot pink, and it right. was just darling. I remember that, and I remember Latches Peaches. Remember she was a little white or gray mare. Remember tiny yeah. little mare. She was fast, and yeah, that's funny. Some of those. Uh, well, the so, whole Latch family from Iowa, they, that's a great 80s, like 70s, 80s family. Oh, yeah. Too. And I, I actually have a surprise for you here because I have a picture of uh, someone winning the Elroy Latch Memorial. So not your brother. I know he won it too, but uh, I got a picture coming up, so towards the end. But here's the Grayson family 
Uh, of course, they had some great POAs. Here's KS's Bandita Breeze. She became a famous POA. And uh, they also had Sirius Sparkle Champagne for a while. But here's, I think, first time we've mentioned HH Cherokee Taboo. So she was a good mare. Oh, yeah. And you remember Taboo. She ended up in Michigan for a long time, and she, she was all over the country. So, of course, Lewis has had her sister, Crazy Alice, and uh, that was just her name, but she was another leopard. So they were both good POAs from the, the east. I think they were bred in Connecticut, those POAs. So, And then here's that picture in color. You know, on, on the POA podcast, we do it thorough. We show you the black and white, and then we show you the color image. So uh, that's a cool picture. Autumn picture the bandita breeze became the mother to one uh, she she ended i don't know if you know her whole story or not susie but when she got a little older she uh, she went lame and she became the mother to tx's dina's real miracle they bred her to a corridor stallion that pat burton had called the realist and out came a all everything mare they call uh tx's dina's real miracle she was a grand champion mare she was actually a little more modern a little better than her mother but of course she was by a quarter horse stallion too. So um, anyway, she she became a supreme champion. Spencer's in Oklahoma had her for a long time and uh, had quite a few babies. By yeah, and Bandina on. Breeze had a unique look too because of the four dark, she was right. she was white, but then she had like four dark legs. Yeah, instead she of white socks, up. she had the dark socks. Yeah, yeah oh there, yeah. There she, see, you say it, I, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> this show's good. I hope all my shows go. I'm going to retire yeah, after tonight. Ken and I get along. We've known yeah. each other way Everybody, too long. this is the last episode of the podcast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, she she was a cool POA. And like I say, she just, I think it was uh, the Chernega family had her in Florida, and I believe she had a leg problem, and uh, so she couldn't be ridden anymore. But they did get one colt, uh, one filly uh, out of her. So that was good. So here's Doc's Foxy Lady and Sarah Reeks from Iowa, and uh, she was some tough competition for you. Again, you guys were close to the same age, I believe, and the Phillies were the same age. They were both 83 mares. So, yep. and you guys show, I know they went to uh, Minnesota shows because there was a lot of Southern Minnesota shows at the time, like St. James and Austin and Albert Lee, and, and then you and guys. We went, went to Iowa. <laughs> and you went to Iowa. I was getting there, Susie. You, you went did. to Iowa. Of course, Mason City was a good show, and you probably went to Marshalltown and stuff. But uh, And then the national show was in Iowa a couple years around that time. So so here's another good competitor from South Dakota. This is Stacy Dugard, and this was her uh, younger one, or, you know, when she was younger, uh, KSA Pretty Poppy. And, uh, but, of course, then she went on to ride Doc Sugar Babe, and here she is when they purchased uh, Doc Sugar Babe. So I remember the funny story about this. Kay didn't tell her husband that they bought anything, and they already had her in the barn for like a couple months. And the catalog came out, or the magazine came out, congratulating the Dugards for purchasing this filly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the dad found out about it. So that's a true story. I got that straight from Kay. So, but yep. And of course, she became a, a champion. I think a supreme champ. She was another. Uh, she was an '82, so she was a year older than Foxy Lady and uh, and Dottie. But she was, uh, of course, she was by Doc's tough dude too. So uh, he, I think this picture in '86. I believe she won Western Pleasure. She did. Yep. Yep. I think that's her and, Western pleasure. And you were in I there. Was in that class. You placed. <laughs> oh, yeah. You placed. I was almost going to put the results, but I either got tired or ran out of time or forgot one of the three. But yeah, and she was one of those good fillies too. That and she was tall. I mean, she, you know, she needed the 56 inch limit for sure because she's only four years old in this picture. But very modern POA. Doc Stuff dude did a great job as a sire. So I know this is one of your favorites here. This is a mare from uh, California, Diana Prince. And she was a good all-around POA. Again, those dark socks. I didn't realize how many POAs had those dark socks. Mm -hmm. That's Kelly Cody there. And uh, in the photo, yep. she's a really, it is a nice person. We're still friends on, on Facebook. Oh, that's cool. She doesn't live in Minnesota, yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she and her family were super nice. And I like Diana Prince because she just had such unique markings. Right. Um, and uh, I know she had a really neat, like, Arabian costume, and I don't know. I just remember unique things about 
different people and kind of what their costumes were or you right. know these weird the weird things like what what trailer they had if they you know right. if they had the, did anybody ever know who had the big banana no big one banana, ever said that neck tra- trailer Tracy's making oh. sure I'm not saying stuff wrong. She takes everything I say so seriously. <laughs> I, they're not socks. I know they're not socks, Tracy. They're just black legs, but they're like socks. They're, you know, <laughs> that's like calling a solid a reverse few spot. So, yeah. I was the one who probably said black socks. Yeah, but well, you, it's all in, it's all in fun. But yeah, and, and here's another picture of her in. Look at all that costume. That's a Native American costume, and that's Diana Prince. And of course, I like her name because it's Wonder Woman. You know, it's the alter ego of Wonder Woman yeah. is Diana Prince. So, uh, yeah, she was a cool POA. Yeah, gorgeous. And they were really great competitors. She said Tim Chrisman had the banana. Somebody Tim said, Chrisman! Is that Thank it? You. Okay, they're from back east. Yeah, Tim Chrisman. He had a leopard. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't remember the trailer. Uh, who said that? Identify yourself, because <laughs> it says Facebook <laughs> user on my end. So we've been waiting all night to hear that answer. So yes, the big banana, the trailer, was, the big yellow gooseneck. See, it was worthwhile coming on my POA podcast. That's uh, right, the hangout the, trailer. The hangout. Everywhere, tra- anytime you went to a show, you had to look. Where was the big banana? Because that's where all the kids were going to be hanging out. You brought a folding chair and your own right. beverage or snack, and then that's where you hung out. Right, and I believe Chrisman was from Pennsylvania. Somebody said, "Wasn't the yellow banana rig from Pennsylvania?" And, and uh, he was Terry. Okay, Terry Strauss. So I'm gonna try to visit the Strausses. You know, my mother-in-law grew up in Reading, Pennsylvania, and that was a big POA town uh, back in the day. Bill and Josie James is near there. You know, there's towns near Reading, but a lot of the people, the club's not very active now, but I want to kind of have a reunion of those people when I, I'm going there for Thanksgiving uh, this year. So I want to kind of put a bug in people's ear. Let's meet up somewhere and, and talk POAs. So, uh, yep. So that was, I never dreamed that was a Pennsylvania rig or, a, you know, an Eastern rig. I figured it was an Oklahoma or Midwestern. Rig when you were well, I think they about. sold it to somebody in the Midwest. They probably or, did, yeah. Yeah, because I think the Big Banana carried on its tradition for a few more years. <laughs> so while we're talking about that and traditions and stuff, this might be a good time to talk about Dave and Bonnie Morris and their place in Edmond, Oklahoma. And, uh, we'll yes. Go ahead, Susie, and tell that story a little bit. Oh, so I, I remember on Facebook, Susie Crane um, had put on something it was maybe in the alumni group it, and it was pictures of the guest book that Dave and Bonnie Morris had at their farm where POA people when they would come and visit their farm or come and stay like sometimes there would be a little stretch in between a like a Waco Texas regional and then then like the international right but it would be too far to go back to California or wherever right. and Dave and Bonnie Morris would just be like just come stay at our farm like with your camper and you there'd be like five or six families there and you'd write your name in the guest book and they were the most gracious wonderful people and Susie Crane had actually put picture and I'd forgotten that I even signed it back in like the (laughs) mid 80s so um it was really fun to see that and and uh so and see your name I know and see my name in there. And so um, I know it's on the POA alumni, and I actually sent Kent the pictures because um, Susie had sent them later. Mm. I, and I, I would have put them on here. I didn't. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was but just, anyway, it's fun to see those names. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed that too. And another thing was, well, they were from Minnesota originally, and then they moved to Oklahoma. So when the show went to Oklahoma, almost all the Minnesota families would stop there and, and lay over. They would, because you couldn't get in right away. Back then, I think you could get in like at midnight or whatever in Oklahoma City. So people would go and hang out at Morris's and then drive from Edmond to OKC, which is just, you know, Edmond's basically a suburb of uh, Oklahoma City. So I know a lot of people did that, like Lewis's and Markers and families. They would stop there and hang out and then go on. So, yeah, that was. Yep, and, the, and pe- some people don't know that, uh, that Bonnie Moore, like they had lived in Minnesota for a while and then moved down so so there was this wonderful um connection of the north and the north and the south and being right. able to stay there right and for sure it was it was a tradition too i know a lot of fa- and when my dad was hauling horses when my family had the horse hauling uh, i think he would stop at morris's a lot of times and of course we bred to their stallion a couple times and uh 
Chernegas from Florida would be there and there'd be all kinds of people there, you know, it was just the hangout. So people would come and they'd swing by and hang out and they'd go get steaks or whatever and cook out and then they'd go on their way. So yeah, that, that was cool. Uh, while you were telling that story, a couple different people said they think the pews got the banana, ended up with the banana trailer. So. I had wondered if it had been the pews, yeah. <laughs> Man, they had yeah. a moped, a uh, grand champion staying, and the banana. They they were something else. I know. Else, well, I can't family. remember if people heard me before when, because I think early on that, that I, people couldn't hear me, but Andy DePew drove me late at night when I was super hungry, and they wouldn't allow walk-ups at the fast food restaurant <laughs> <laughs> near the fairgrounds. He drove me through in, in, on a moped to get a cheeseburger, and I will forever be grateful yeah. for it. Yeah, that was a good story. That. I don't know if that made it early. I'm glad you repeated that story because that is a good story. So, And we had a picture of Andy earlier. So, uh, Jen just put, she grew up as Jen Sparks. Uh, the Sparks family loved our stays at the Morrises every year. So much fun. And that's a California family, you know, that would stay in Oklahoma. So, yeah, that's that's for sure is, is a cool story. So. Okay, so moving on with the podcast here. If you're just joining us, this is POAs that rock the 80s. Uh, Susie Schultz Huff from uh, Minnesota and I are talking about some of our favorite POAs from the 1980s. And uh, here's Klein's bold legend. I know you remember him. Samantha Smith showed him in Wisconsin. And then, of course, the uh, Steen family got him and uh, did great things with him. But. Yeah, I think yeah. they called him B.L. B.L., yeah. yeah. B.L. They did. B.L. was his name. And he lived a long time as well, a long time in, in their pasture in uh, Menominee. So, now he, had here's a fancy, the, he had a very fancy trot. Did he? he yeah. Really I, I remember trot. Samantha showing in showmanship. She showed some showmanship. She was kind of a trendsetter that way. She kind of crouched down a little bit, and she, she trotted in a certain way. She had her own style. And then later, people kind of copied that. But... She did it. What she didn't stand up real tall. She kind of, you know, it was, she did it on purpose, and she did well in showmanship. But it was like she was getting closer to the horse, you know, to the pony, mm -hmm. that way. So here's Moon Song Leo. He was just one of the many famous POAs the Coraleskis had over the years from Broadhead, Wisconsin. Of course, they stood Doc's built tough for a while, and they uh, sold uh, Cinnamon Straw. They made him a supreme champion, then sold him as a young age, and then Jeff moved on to this gilding. Uh, Moon Songs Leo. So, you showed against Jeff's sisters, probably, and Jeff. Lisa, too. Lisa, Lisa Koleski. Lisa, yep. yeah. And I think they called him Fire. They could have, yeah. Fire. Because look at his mane, is that kind of fiery red. Yeah. And they yep. had him, Don Abel had a stallion in Wisconsin, and this one was by him, I believe, and then uh, War Becky Warner's gilding that you showed against uh, DA's King Leo was by that same stallion. So, yeah. Okay. I didn't realize they were related. I, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're brothers. Now. Yeah. So here's a Doc's uh, Gilly, Doc's Bold Prince, and this is Kelly King. Uh, Kelly made a name for herself showing JBJ's Made of Straw, but then she went on to this guild. And of course, her brother JJ showed him too, more in the 90s, but uh, she did well with this was a Gold Prince uh, gilding. And uh, of course, Jerry, her dad, just went into the Hall of Fame. I don't know if you knew that, but. Uh, they put him in the Hall of Fame, inducted him this year, so that was good. Uh, wildfire, they said Susie, is what they called him, Wildfire. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Wildfire. <laughs> See, we, you got, go. we have great viewers on Black Hand and Beyond. That's right. <laughs> so here's another famous point. POA, uh, Pokey Plot It. I remember Pokey Plot It well. She got famous for selling for a lot of money, but she did other stuff besides that. But. Uh, yeah, she was on the cover here in 1985. And here's Shoto. Shoto was famous in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So <laughs> he, uh, from the Denny family in Kansas. I'm going to do an episode on the Denny's one of these days. It'll probably be a three-hour episode. But I was going to say, that's going to be a long episode. You might uh, have to have part one and a part two. <laughs> yeah, I might have to, yeah, because just reading all the placings, that's going to get tedious. So I'm just going to say they did a lot of winning. Okay, but, uh, yeah, so... Tracy said, can't forget Pokey Plot. Yeah, Shoto became the winningest POA ever when I did the studies back when I was a young guy, 21. I did the, the leading sires and breeders, and he was the number one at the time with uh, 54 wins. He's been passed by a couple now, but still 54 wins by one 
pony is a lot at the national show. So of course he rode two generations, you know, of the same family competed with him. So, uh, yeah. So here's a cool picture I thought you'd like. This is the high points, probably in '85, I'm guessing, and I know it is because that's uh, the late Charlie Bropes. He was a great friend of mine, great POA promoter and breeder, and the show was in Ohio. So I know that's when uh, Charlie. And the, the magazine cut this off, not me, but it, they were Gary Hamilton pictures. And of course, there's Mary Douglas, and she won the high point. Kim Sims was reserve, and runner-up was Kelly Bridges. Those are and Tiffany Sparks. Those are all who's who of POA girls in the mid '80s. And then, of course, uh, we just mentioned Jeff Koroleski. He was reserved to John Katzenberger, who would have been riding Darlin' Jill. And uh, so, them are two cool pictures there. And I know you remember those, those oh, yeah. guys as well. So since I am a breeder, Susie, I did include some stallions, just not all gildings and show mares. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just bear you with me. Have stallions. Yeah, but I can run through this. We've seen a lot of his get tonight. We've seen three of them at least. This is, of course, Doc's Tough Dude, the stallion uh, Doc Demers picked to replace uh, the mortal Double Tough when he passed away at a young age. And Doc's Tough Dude uh, sired... Bitto Tough Cash that we've seen tonight, Doc's Sugar Babe, and Doc's Foxy Lady, and a bunch more, of course. Doc's First Lady, I think Tom Vickery, or I forget who showed uh, First Lady, but I know they showed. And this is a Levi. Levi was famous for a while. He went on to be a famous gilding, Susie. He won the Indiana State Fair like five years in a row, and uh, he did a lot of good stuff after he was a famous young POA. Of course, I always got to show Tracy because she's one of our biggest contributors. So here's Doc's Tough Tiger and Tracy Sweet Keen from Florida. Oh, she, yeah. I always love that picture. It's <laughs> a great photo. Yeah, that's a good photo. So I put that in as many times as I can. I mean, if it's about Danny Boy or something, I might not be able to slip it in. But I need to do his bottom side of the pedigree on an episode. Tracy will agree with me because the, the whole Devil Siri and all that you know that bloodline just the the leopard that's where the leopards coming from there in his pedigree so um, and then of course gold chips we seen him as a baby uh, early on because he was born in Anoka Minnesota so just north of where you grew up and just west or actually uh, northeast of where I grew up so uh, Lewis's famous stallion and then here's Katzenberger's young uh, Ghost of Gold, Jan Ghost of Gold, he was a unique marked Palomino. These two were half-brothers, of course, both by Gold Prince. And he had gone on to be one of the top POAs, Susie, in the 90s, you know, with Jared. Uh, he was a great PO and very fast. We showed him as a stallion. And yeah, and then, so unique looking. Oh, he was unique looking, yeah. The cluster of spots, they call that, and did everything, yeah. And here's Avatars Mucho when he was younger. Of course, he became a grand champion. And uh, Andrea Shocker from Missouri uh, showed him. He became a supreme champion. I always liked the name of their place. I think it was the Flying Dutchman they called their place or something like that. But of course, Avatars. Yeah, he was a beauty. He was a beauty. Yeah, Avatars Mucho is a product of the Damon family in uh, Iowa. And they're still one of the top breeders going. And then here's Tough Jet. My family always liked Tough Jet because my dad was partial to bright red horses. And we even named, you know, Ruby Tough Dots was red, and then we had red, double shot, and we named red. That was the same year. So I always remember when Dad seen him for the first time. He, he wanted to know who that was, and I knew who it was. I'm like, that's Tough Jet, Dad. So, of course, that's Olin Ziegler when he was a yearling, when Tough Jet was a yearling out in Ohio. Now, I had a really good picture of Danielle and Black Swan S, and some, that was one of them that didn't make the cut along with... Uh, Dottie Jones, and I don't know why it didn't. It wasn't because of me, but here's a good Waltonberry photo. Of course, again, she was about the age group with Jared Katzenberger, Danielle was, and she was, they got really famous in the 90s, but she won her share of stuff in the 80s with this mare, too, and uh, Black Swan ass. But I had a good photo from the 86 International when she was the superior grand mare, and I wish it would have made the, the cut. But uh, I got to tell you a quick story here, Susie. This is. Uh, kind of a funny story and I don't remember the judge's name I wouldn't mention his name anyway but I was a ring steward when I was a teenager and you were showing Dottie Sandy Tough Dots you were in 13 through 18 Danielle was in 9 through 12 and uh, there was one of the Hanson girls riding Little Britches Lady you remember her? 
Yep. Yeah. And the judge told me, he said something, you know, and I said, I said, oh, I raised POAs. I didn't tell him that we were connected to, to Dottie or anything because that would have been wrong. So, it, but anyway, I said, oh, I want to kind of judge when I get old. I'm starting to judge in uh, FFA and stuff. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, son, it's real easy. He said, each age group in a show this size, there's usually one that just stands out, he said. And, and they pretty much got to do something wrong. He said, it's their class to win. And you were the one in 13 through 18. Danielle was the one in 9 through 12. And Little Britches Lady and uh, Stephanie or whoever it was, maybe one of her sisters, was the 8 and under. And that was the three that day anyway. That, that was his picks. And you guys had to miss a lead or do something really wrong. Uh, to, so you must have had a good show that day. But must have had a good day. Yeah, well, yeah. And, it, and it helps to have a pony that, that you know, you have to – Give so much a, <laughs> so much credit to the pony too, well, and they stand out and they behave and right. everything goes right that day. And well, she was flashy too. She had them. that color that stood out pretty good too. So yeah. So here's Two uh, D's Cobell, and this is Sally uh, Altland. So I know they they were number one in the nation towards the end of the eighties. This was nineteen eighty nine, but another uh, Morris product. Two D's, of course, is for uh, Dave Morris and his brother when they started breeding POAs in Minnesota. And then here's uh, Cherokee Taboo again, HH Cherokee Taboo. This is uh, in Tennessee, Deanna Hood. Oh, yeah. Her. Yeah, she was. She, she did so well stuff. that year. She won, I remember she won the 9 through 12 saddle that year at the, yeah. at, at the International, and I believe it was Des Moines. Right. Yeah, that, that was the show for her where she could, I mean, she and that pony could do no wrong. I mean, right. they were just absolutely amazing. Well, look at the first and, you know, top 10 in the time advance, English pleasure, age mares, uh, stock seat, hunt seat, and then, of course, won the traveling tour. She was number one in the nation. But when you're number one in that many things, it helps. So here's the yeah. surprise I was going to show you. This is very uh, special for Midwest people, especially. And Wayne Latch just passed away not too long ago, just months ago. But here's his daughter and his mother. And this is congratulating Chris Latch uh, winning the Elroy Latch Trophy. And this was always held at the Midwest Regional. You remember these, these oh, competitions. Yeah. yeah. You showed in these, I'm sure. So, yes. Yeah. And, of course, Tiki's Little Joe was an older POA. But, yep, she won. This would have been, uh, I'm guessing, what, 82 probably? 82, 82. That sounds something. about right. Yeah. I know Dick won it, your brother, with, uh, oh, what's his name? The Ringo Starr in 79. I seen that picture last night. I'm like, well, I put a lot of pictures of the Schultz family. I don't need that one because it is 79. So, <laughs> so, but I did put no, a picture. No, this is here. a good one. That yeah. was a big, I do remember that being a big moment for their family. Oh, yeah. And of course, Helen Latch's name was on more registrations than anybody because she was the secretary treasurer. For years and years and she she signed all the pedigrees and then later stamped them i remember some of the first poas we had uh helen latch's name was on there and uh, so that was cool and of course wayne and judy her son wayne they continued to raise poas and show poas after elroy passed away he was an early member the latches were not long after murfelds i know murfelds was the ninth member of poas and latches was in that first couple of years you know like 56 or so so uh, but Wayne had a good career, and Wayne judged. I know he judged you before, and he judged at the national show. He was a good POA uh, personality. So, so anyway, yeah. I put that one in there. I knew you'd appreciate that. So, here's a good Gary Hamilton photo. This is another California famous POA, and this is as a younger POA, Suncrest Big Mac, and uh, he went on to do a lot of stuff in the '90s as well. Again, he went to Decatur, Illinois, and uh, did a lot of stuff in that state, but. Um, the Suncrest ponies just seemed a little special. You know, she said it was the California sun, Susie. She told me that. She said that's what <laughs> makes her POA so special. I said, well, funny it don't turn them into raisins or something like that. She didn't appreciate that. So she didn't like that comment. But. And who's the rider? Is it is it Spears? It could be. I'm not sure. Participation again. And hopefully people have not went to sleep. I don't know what time it is, but we need uh, people to – because uh, – and this would have been, was that in Oklahoma City, it looks like? It looks like Oklahoma City, yeah. yep. So that would have been uh, probably 87 or 88. 
because he's an early 80s POA. So, but like I say, he got even more pop. He won the versatility twice. Uh, so, um, several Suncrests ended up winning the versatility award more than any other breeder, and several of them did it. So, uh, but yeah, he was that dark color again. A lot of Jill Gleason. I don't know if that was Jill Gleason. Ah, Jill Gleason. That's that yeah. Much I know more Jill familiar. Gleason rode him. That's correct. Yeah, and that was Jen uh, Sparks that put that. So. Yeah, Tracy yes. said she I accepted know. Big Mac's Hall of Fame award for Sonny Chernega. He al he also spent some time with me going down the road with both Jackie and Sonny. Yeah, born in '84. Okay, I knew he was born in the early. That's still early '80s. It was before '85. So, <laughs> so here's another POA, kind of a late in the late '80s, but Bonanza's Gold and uh, Rodney Garling. I'm sure you remember that team. That would have been the late '80s. He's, he's there winning a saddle so and then this kind of I've slipped this in because you know I run the show so basically I can do what I want but <laughs> uh, Tammy Neblock is a big supporter of the show her and her family they watch it almost every uh, week and I showed her earlier had a picture of her earlier with uh, what's his name East Acres Gold Bar and this was the young one she won the JPFC with or the 19 and over early on in the late 80s this would have been 89 and this is lucky lad and her sister uh lorena won a bunch of stuff with lucky lad in the 90s and there's a cool picture in the pine trees there that's a beautiful picture that's why i included yeah, that he was fancy yeah he is fancy of course they were a famous family from illinois yeah he was a fancy poa a south dakota bred poa and uh, so even though he didn't become that fit he did win a big futurity in the 80s so now here's a photo that uh jen sent me jen sparks she's got a married name now of course like we all do well i don't but uh this is uh should be in the hall of fame or in a museum i'm going to start a museum someday hopefully with poa's blessing this is uh i'll need help with some of the kids but powwow zip bars is on the left and then of course suncrest uncle sam series sparkle champagne so arguably two of the top gildings ever and then of course the great do everything grand champion mayor black swan s on the end so those are four big names if, susie if you added up all the international show classes that those four won i mean it's in the hundreds you know yeah i don't even yeah i couldn't even add it up yeah I, and i do that that's what i do as a hobby and i wouldn't even want to add it up so but yeah oh them, them are four legends that somebody had the you know, just the perspective to take this picture in 1991, and that's the year I graduated, 91. And uh, anyway, that's a cool picture. I know, of course, Danielle's on the right, and then I believe that's uh, oh, uh, Lauren. Grayson, yeah, Grayson. Lauren that's Grayson. Lauren. On, Is it Nicholas Sparks? I think it's which of the Sparks brothers. He's one of the Sparks Jen. brothers. Hopefully, Jen will come on here. Yep. But I have no idea, and I apologize, but I don't know who's on Pow Wow zip bars but obviously they were a good team because they deserve to be in this photo so and this is a deets photo from the early 90s but these all these did well in in the 80s of course you know uh suncrest uncle sam a lot of his best days were in the 80s and powwow zip bars was an old he was born in the 60s powwow zip bars and then of course black swan was born in 82 so she I think Danielle probably graduated in 93 or 94 was her last year. Dan Sparks. Dan Sparks. Oh, Dan. Okay. And Jody Gardner. Or Garner. Jody Garner. Thanks, Jody Jen. Garner. I'm so glad okay. you're watching. You need to watch every week, Jen. So uh, it's <laughs> earlier out in California, so she's not getting sleepy. So, uh, yeah, I've had to interview a few people from the East, Susie. And I, if it's a two or three hour show, it's getting to be, you know, nine, 10 o'clock out there when I'm interviewing them. And so I always got to keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, so and now I, I included this one because I know Sarah Honor. Uh, I think you guys were pretty close, weren't you, Sean? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And there she is in showmanship. That was at Ohio. She is. Yeah, there she is. So it's a fuzzy photo. I got it out of the magazine, but. Uh, here's a little better photo at the World Show in Colorado, and I know you were at that show. And uh, what was the name? I'll put you on the spot. What was the name of her pony? Um, so I'm thinking, of course, of RJ um, was the barn name. 
Um, I think I know the name. I just was putting you on the spot. But isn't it Double well, Highs Fancy Boy or something like that? Or Say it again. D like Double Highs Fancy Boy or something like oh, that? Oh, Tumble Boy. Tumble Boy. Double Highs Tumble, tumble Boy. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I just tumble. needed a little You needed a, a little, little push. push. Yeah. That's right. I had I the like Double Highs. Boy. And there's Lisa so was, just said, yeah, tumble boy. When he was little, um, he was kind of jumpy. And so um, he had been her older sister, Gina's um, junior horse. Okay. And she's like, I'm calling him RJ, real jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because they had Dragon's Talon before, who was, yeah. you know, like a, you know, a big, solid, like, been there, done that gelding. Bomb and then proof, she gets yeah. the junior horse and she's like, oh, now I got a jumpy one, yeah. RJ. But obviously he grew out of that in a year or so yeah he grew out of that yeah he did well of course they were all they were always good riders her and her sister yeah so yeah i included that because i knew i thought you guys were pretty and here's another picture i included you probably can't see it yet but the wisconsin and minnesota i believe you're the only one from minnesota but remember when the world show did the team tournaments and uh, here's a cool picture uh, Corey oh kozer chantel coulters you Troy Kozer and Sarah Hunter. So you guys took second in the, I think, That's probably right. California. Wisconsin so. Oda. Oh Wisconsin Oda, yep. You're That's the pillar right. over there on the bottom right in that pyramid. But, yeah. <laughs> and I think, like, we were actually in the running for first. And it was one of those moments where I, I never stuck the flag unless I pretty much stopped and <laughs> put it in. And I remember I stuck the flag. And it was in the team tournament, and the timer didn't work. Oh. And I was like, one out of a million, I stick the flag, oh. and I had to do it again, and I missed. And you missed. Oh, that's <laughs> brutal. Mark, you got second. Wow, well, we're going to end on a sad story, Susan. We better go back and recap. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. that's funny. Because, okay. you know, I just I remember sticking at that one. Right. Oh, and the timer didn't work. I would have said, man, you just come up with the time. Give me a medium score. That might have been enough to, so... Here's yeah, a picture I really cool. like, and this is, it's a cool picture, and two young ladies here, you're one of them with their, their good POAs, but one of the reasons I like this picture is because, you know, I admired Suncrest's Uncle Sam, and when I seen you standing in a picture with him with something that came off of our farm, you know, I was like, maybe we can do this, you know what I mean? This was, you know, it was just kind of something like that, because you guys were, uh, that was at the Rocky Mountain Regional in, what, Colorado, I believe right so, yeah it was yeah. so fun because those really if you if you didn't get to some of the regionals or the internationals you never got to spend as much time like i never would have met the sparks family and right. some of these other families and i remember we would see them at these big shows and and we'll say oh will we will we see you in colorado in two weeks will we see you in oklahoma in however many weeks and <laughs> um that's just precious yeah. precious time oh uh, yeah for me, precious memories, right. for sure. And here we are all these years later, you know, the 90s, the 2000s, now we're already in the 20s. And here's Jen talking, of, she's in this picture and she's talking, I remember that show, she says, and you're here live, you know, on the phone talking about, so them are special times. And that's what POA does, not that other breeds and anything else, a bowling league or a tennis league or whatever, but POA is so special, you know, because the bonds that last forever. And uh, it's just, it was a special time. And it still is. I mean, kids are still doing it today. They're meeting meeting each other from all over the country. They go to Tulsa to the where the Congress happens to be. You do know they changed the name of our show, the international show, to the National Congress. So they did that in like 12. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> taken me a while. To yeah. Well, I was, rev I revolted against it. Yeah, that was like three or four years after I got off the board. I said, oh, they waited till I got off the board to do it because I would have fought tooth and nail. Uh, because it's just, you know, since 1959, it's been the international show. But I'm not going to get political, but it's, you know, and maybe in retrospective, it's cool now. It's the National Congress. But yeah, Tracy Keene, just Tracy Sweet, just said special time in my life. So I know a lot of people feel that way that grew up in it. So, uh, yeah. So. And it wasn't the time of, um, you know, now there's, an, and we did live in the city. So we had, we did have to have our pony at a, like a training barn or whatever because right. we had to board the barn at the bar barn but right. um like there hadn't been at the time a lot of big time trainers like the kids did so much oh, they did. and yeah. we didn't travel with a trainer we i mean there's right. a lot of change in in just the horse world in general for kids and well i remember your I mom mean, telling my dad don't tell people that we board out <laughs> 
<laughs> she said that, I don't want to embarrass Joan because I love Joan. She's one of my favorite people in the world. But you know, and now it's you know it's switched so much. There's way more people that do what you guys did, and mm-hmm. then have farms because you know it's just the nature of the world nowadays. Not many people have hobby farms. You know, it's you live in town and and they've recruited a lot of people like Eula Gayweiler in Illinois and stuff. Recruited people that lived on golf course road and stuff, you know what I mean, or country club road, and they lived in a house with no acreage, so they went and boarded at her facility, and and all over the country that happened, Riverside, California, so it wasn't just, you know, you guys, but that is the thing, that's not the trend, that's pretty much the norm now, and then of course, like you said, the trainers come to the shows too, you know, (laughs) but... Yeah, things yeah, have changed. Yeah, that didn't happen as much then. No, was... that didn't happen. You rarely saw a trainer, you know, with maybe at the sale or something to pick out a prospect, but you didn't see him on the back of a POA at a show. So, yeah, but things have changed. And I think the height kind of did that too. The height changed, allowed for that more. But So I'm going to wrap up the show uh, a little bit, uh, Susie, but I, I love this picture here, Stock Pony Raining, and this is at the World Show. So this is you and Sandy Tough Dots winning the stock pony raining. So, uh, and you're just and I think in a that I wrote, I think I wrote this in there, but uh, as a comment when you posted it. But I mean, Kent, this just says about a lot to your breeding. Is this pony because it didn't have anything to do with me? It was late at night. It was it was probably eleven or twelve at night, and we still had raining to run, and we still had trail to do, wow. and we ran raining. And we literally trotted out, trotted across the fairgrounds to the other arena, did trail, and that pony won back to back. Like, what what <laughs> pony would do that but a POA? Right. Honestly, that had right. zero to do with me. I was exhausted, hungry, tired, whatever. <laughs> and, I mean, it was all. And that was after a day of showing. Pony. That These was a long day. Yeah, they are. They, and that's one thing they still have in common that they did in the 60s and 70s and all the way up till today is they're just amazing ponies and they're bred to do everything. They're a little more specific now, specialized, uh, especially they're trying to get reining in more, uh, but the pleasure is what took over a lot, you know, and then people breed for halter. There's still some people that concentrate on halter because you halter so much the first couple years before you can ride them. But there's still a lot of POAs out there like Dottie, Sandy Tough Dots that could do anything, you know, and she looked good doing it too. So, uh, but I think you had a lot to do with it. I, I, I'm glad she went to your hands. She could have went to someone that wasn't in POAs. So, you know, that was, it was a good collaboration. So, yeah, pony of a lifetime. Pony of a lifetime. Yeah. Well, I know <laughs> we you, all should be so lucky. Yeah. Well, I know it helped me to say, well, like, you know, I'm going to do this when I get older. And I did until, you know, the price of hay got to be $10 a bale. But, uh, you know, I raised POAs for a long time. And it was because of these memories, is a lot of it. So, well, I hope you enjoyed talking about the 80s, Susie. I think we uh, we hit on a lot of great POAs. No offense if I if we miss I mean, there was thousands of them, so we couldn't talk about every single one, but we talked about a lot of them, so almost 100 of them. And uh, it was fun catching up with you, Susie. You have to come back and be a guest again some other time. I'll try to get the phone working properly. So. <laughs> Anytime. 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 All right. Okay, well, thanks for joining me tonight, Susie. Thanks, Ken. All right. Bye. All right. So that was my good friend, Susie Schultz Huff. We haven't seen each other in a long time. She grew up probably about 60 miles from where I grew up in Minnesota. Um, And she showed POAs all through the 80s, 70s, and 80s. Her family got in when she was a little, little girl. Her brother was a good writer as well. Great family. I loved her mom and dad, Ron and uh, Joan. They were both school teachers. Just uh, really good people to know and would do anything for you type family. Kind of like what we still have in POAs, that type of family. Uh, That never gets old when you run into a great family like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the POAs that rock the 80s. And I hope Susie and I nailed it as far as getting the topic across. We didn't talk about pop culture that much. That was kind of just the lead in anyway and a joke. Uh, I was going to talk about the difference between Dirty Dancing and uh, Roadhouse, who liked what movie better. But we don't have enough guys on here to support me on the road. Again, I want to apologize if there was a great POA from the 80s and we didn't mention it. Uh, Of course, um, I would have. I just, you know, run out of time. So I want to thank everybody for watching the show. 
tonight. We did run almost two hours. I am going to just give a little quick uh, what's coming up. We have some great shows lined up for you guys. Um, of course, this was episode 35. Next week on the 15th, I'm going to have two guests. It's going to be about Dakota Chrome, which I'm in Minnesota. And for a long time, she had I'm a few spot dream. She's not using him any longer, but of course she had him, raised a lot of great POAs out of him and other stallions she used as well. And he was a son of one of Bud and Bertie Campbell's stallions, of course, a baby they raised, Campbell's dream catcher. So that's going to be the second feature of that show. So Dakota Chrome and then Campbell's POAs. Bud and Bertie Campbell from Rochester, Minnesota. That'll be a long show. Lori's going to join us live from Minnesota. Back East is going to join us as well. She's going to talk about the later part of the Campbell's program as she owned Campbell's Zippo and then his famous champion son, Campbell's Dreamcatcher. Uh, then on the 22nd, I'm going to have one of my go-to guests, Ashley McKenzie. Of course, she grew up in POA. She's just down the road in Edmond. She has a great stable down there, Silver Wind, with a whole bunch of POAs and POA kids eager to ride. So we're going to talk about Silver Wind, and we might kind of do a fun show about talking about pedigree. Those POAs that those kids ride today, it's kind of cool to see. Uh, I know they would like just to tune in and watch some of the heritage of uh, the pedigrees and stuff like that. The 29th is going to be one of the special shows for me. Again, one of my mentors in POAs. I've known this lady since I was very young in POAs. She helped my family out in breeding and stuff, and that's uh, Jackie Guthrie. So, of course, the JBJs. That'll be on the 29th. That'll be episode 38. And I'm going to have a very special guest, someone that knows Jackie quite well, her friend Tammy Verzi. We'll catch up with Tammy in the beginning of the show, talk about some of the things she's up to, like the magazine and the Breeders' Challenge for Charity, that year-end magazine. Tammy just knocks it out of the park. And, of course, she's uh, invested in some of Jackie's horses over the years and partners, and uh, she's got some great ones. And hopefully we can have Jackie live as well. Uh, on that episode and then April 5th we're going to have the Leonard Lewis Leonard and Joan Lewis and there's some great POAs all three of their kids won high point saddles and POAs of course their grandson Jeremy Poitras showed for many many years his whole career in POAs and a younger person in POAs you new to POAs Jackie uh, or I mean yeah Jackie Hall is going to be our guest that night and we may have a guest representing the Lewis family as well but I like to the black hand and beyond we have you know, the black hand part and then the beyond part. So the Lewises will represent more of the history and then talk about what Jackie Hall's doing there. And uh, she's either in southern Minnesota or northern Iowa. She has a training facility. Uh, April 12th will be a pretty cool show. I know a lot of people want to tune in for that. It's in the early stages. That'll be episode 40, and that's the Hardship Clause show. So there's, I'm going to talk about my theory on the four hardships, so you'll want to tune in for that, see if Tracy argues with me or if she agrees with me. I'm not going to give too much out on that, but we'll have a lot of pictures, and we'll show a lot of different hard ponies that were hardshipped. So that's my schedule for now. Of course, we always got a lot of great farms we need to talk about, about Lannans, Lammers, Cayugas, Rutledges, and them are all coming down the road. We just need time and where are they now segments and stuff like that. So I want to thank my very special guest, Susie, for being on tonight, Susie Schultz from Minnesota, and uh, thank everybody for uh, joining us and watching. Make sure you tell your friends how to find out about uh, Black Hand and Beyond on POA Facebook. Thanks everybody, enjoy the song.